those who are online from Malaysia, Vietnam, and uh, Africa, and to our STJMC, Ila community pastor, and all the uh, other members of OC. Again, we are very blessed today to uh, listen to the uh, lecture series number three. And very fortunate to have you with us because we have completed the first two series where we were able to reflect on how we can follow Christ in ordinary but in extraordinary ways. And uh, to officially begin this lecture series number three, we are your friends to uh, formally open lecture. So good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming and joining us in the last leg of our annual Carmelite Lecture Series. So before we start, may we call on uh, Brother Michael to lead us in the opening prayer. May I request everyone to please stand? Let us recall to mind and heart that God is in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. O merciful God, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we give you thanks. For you have given us the gift of life, the gift of faith, and the gift of our vocation. Especially, we give thanks to you loving God. For today, you give us the gift of having lecture and Benedicta of the cross. May you send your Holy Spirit upon each one of us to enlighten our minds, to guide our heart, to deepen our knowledge Benedict, through, so that through the example of her fervent heart that searches for the truth. He said, my longing for the truth was a single prayer. Then may you, loving God, grant us courage and wisdom to love you above all things in our daily life. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Saint Benedicta of the Cross. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, thank you, Kuya Mike. Once again, good morning to everyone. Uh, before we introduce the speaker for today, I'd like to give a kind of a brief summary on what we have discussed, what we have listened to last two Saturdays. First, we listened and we heard the talk about Blessed Josefa, Naval Girbes, no? Her spirituality is not about the, doing the extra, extraordinary things. It's not about the highfalutin spiritual gifts. It's more on the daily humdrums, the daily routine that she put her love into it, no? Like, her, her whole heart was into what she does right, as a Christian and as, a OC, as an OCDS. So it would remind us also that as we go on in the ordinary events of our life, we should always remember to put God first in whatever we do. Because if we don't, we would miss the target. We miss the point of being a Christian. We miss the point of being an OCDS. We miss the point of being a member of the Carmelite family. So that's her gift to us. 
Blessed Josephus' gift to us is to live the ordinary, extraordinarily. And then last Saturday, we heard uh, Father Dick talk about uh, the spirituality of bless, uh, Brother Lawrence. It's more of being attuned to the presence of God. It's more being attuned to what he asks of, ask of us at the present moment. And what would really help us to be attuned to his presence is what we call, uh, there should be a kind of asceticism, asceticism in our part. No? Like we do away with the distractions that would prevent us from recognizing that God is present at this very moment. Because we are, if we are distract, distracted in every moment, it would be difficult to know what God is asking of us because we'll be tossed in so many directions here and there. So that is why prayer is very important in cultivating that practice of presence and the sacramentality of what it means to be in His presence. We make use of what we, what we experience in life, no? Because, of course, we are not angels. We are not pure spirits. We are matter and form. We are composed of matter and form. And we need uh, the created things for us to reflect on the grandeur of God. And in the long run, as we continue the practice, there will be uh, difficulties. There will be hardships. It will be not that easy. But as we move on, as we progress, in the practice, we become more attuned to the presence of God. That sometimes we don't, sometimes the, dirt, the time will come that we don't need an intermediary because God himself will infuse that grace upon you. But first, it requires practice. It requires a kind of dedication from each one of us, especially in prayer. So do not neglect your duties in prayer. Duties and prayers should be accompanied by our loving desire, no? The desire is love. If your desire is for, for you to be known, to be popular, to be, to be known by your peers, then you would fail actually in that practice. Your, your aim first is really to love God above all things. That's what we are asked to do as Carmelites. As, as people who are embracing the Carmelite way of life, the Carmelite prayer. So now, uh, let me uh, invite uh, Sister Violeta to introduce to us our uh, speaker for today. Good morning, Father. Good morning, brothers and sisters. To introduce our resource person, Father Sheldon, he is a scientific research fellow of Titus Bratzma Institute, Radboud University, Nijmegen, the Netherlands. His focus is on biblical spirituality, psycho-spiritual accompaniment, and spiritual direction. He is a co-professor at the Department of Social Sciences, College of Arts and Science at the University of San Beda, Manila a board member and associate editor of Sciencia, the International Journal of the Liberal Arts of San Beda, Manila. He is also involved in the Ministry of Accompaniment. He facilitates the 13th week psycho-spiritual accompaniment in the Diocesan Seminary of Immaculate Conception, Major Seminary, Theology Department, Diocese of Malolos. Of course, he is an ordained priest and a member of the Carmelite Order, or CARM, of the Philippines. He serves at San Isidro Labrador Paris, Bagong Silangan, Quezon City. Brothers and sisters, let us welcome Father Sheldon R. Tabile. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, Ma'am Violi, for that uh, generous introduction. She is a colleague before in the San Beda University. Magandang araw po sa inyong lahat. Good day to all of you. I hope that you are well and you are savoring, delighting the very presence of God. I would like to thank the invitation given to me. Of course, first to Father Dionysius Balute, OCD, Sister Isabel Inlayo, OCDS, Brother Melvin Arquiza, OCD, and Sister Maricor Maglaya, OCDS, for the invitation to share with you my little insights on uh, Edith Stein or Teresa Benedicta of the Cross. There will be two layers in terms of your theme. The first is the overarching, which is heaven unveiled, living out the ordinary extraordinarily. And for my purposes, I have the subtitle or the sub-theme, to be clothed with God's presence, Edith Stein's inner spiritual journey of believing hoping and loving i choose unveiled as the key and overarching theme in this in this lecture in this uh, input for today and that unveiled is related with the heavens let me root it first in the scriptures so that we will have a foundational understanding of what unveiling means according to God's word. If you go to the scriptures, there are five occurrences of the word unveiling. And the word used specifically in Greek is apokalupsis. Does it sound familiar? Does it ring a bell? So unveiling is apokalupsis. That is why we also understand unveiling as uncovering we also understand unveiling as revelation so apocalypse revelation the book of revelation for those who have studied the scriptures we knew well that the entire scripture is a revelation of the interior life of god of the inner life of god his very love Faithful love. And in, in Hebrew, we call that the chesed or the hesed of God. And it is constant. It is spread throughout the entire scriptures. However, there are particular moments in the scriptures wherein God's voice is heard. God is revealed through His voice in public, not in private relationship. And there, people was able to see before the eyes the revelation of God. In the New Testament, specifically, there are two specific events. First, the baptism of the Lord. And second, the transfiguration. So I would like to zero in in the baptism of the Lord. You are very familiar with the story. Jesus came to John the Baptist, baptize me, who am I to baptize you? And then, you know, you need to do that to bring fulfillment into this baptism of repentance, baptism of conversion. And after John the Baptist performed the baptism, the ordinary, the routine, the regular baptism, what happened? We were told that the heavens were open and the voice of God is heard. This is my son, the beloved with whom I am well pleased. What opened the heavens? The baptism of John? No. What opened the heavens is the love of the Father to the Son. It is the love of God that will unveil the heavens. It is the delight of the Father to the Son. 
what will open the heavens is his love for his only begotten son. And since we are made children of God in our belief in Jesus, the heavens are also unveiled before us. It was an ordinary baptism, but because of the unveiling of the heavens, the love of the Father being poured into the Son, the ordinary baptism was made into an extraordinary one. So what will make the ordinary extraordinary? The love of God being poured, being received in that ordinary situation. The world tells us that in order for us to be extraordinary, you need to be exceptional. You need to be remarkable. You need to be outstanding. That is why in academic performances, to whom do you give the medal? The excellent, the top one, the most intelligent, and so on and so forth. You don't give awards to the persevering. You don't give awards to daily attendances. Maybe you can hand over to them certificate, but that will not be given during graduation. Only the excellent, the extraordinary, the superior of intelligence are given that recognition. The world recognizes and rewards those who exhaust all possibilities to be extraordinary. The world will never give recognition to the ordinary. However, this is not only in the secular world, but even in the church. In our faith experiences, it is as if that we are also have the tendency to be associated, to want to be associated, to be extraordinary. When it is Christmas, when it is Holy Week, when it is Easter, the church is packed with people. If the one giving the retreat or seminar is a renowned person, a cardinal perhaps, a celebrated author, mm -hmm, then it will be packed with attendance of people. Easter Vigil. All lectors are present, even though they are not needed anymore. <laughs> Sacristans will form a queue even they are not doing anything just to be there because it is Easter. Lay ministers, even though there is no more ciborium, they will still be there because it is an extraordinary event. After a big talk, especially with a renowned speaker, everyone would like to have a selfie and upload it later on in their Instagram or in Facebook, it is as if they have really listened well to the speaker. <laughs> that is now the measure of attendance, having a selfie to your speaker, with your speaker. But look at ordinary days in the church. Perhaps not even 10% of pews are occupied. Very difficult to look for lectors, to look for lay ministers and sacristan. In our daily mass, it is the parish secretaries present. It is the maintenance personnel. It is the cook who is attending the mass and the priest. They are the regular attendees. And if the speaker is not famous, if he's obscure, you will really have difficulty of having attendance, a good number of participants. We are so much inclined to the extraordinary, thinking it is what it means to be great in the kingdom of God, and we forget that God's reign is for the little faith. The little faith. As little as the mustard seed. A faith that is dependent and humble before God. The key to being extraordinary is to be ordinary. You want to be extraordinary? Be ordinary. Remain 
to be ordinary. That is the key. In our spiritual life, becoming ordinary only happens when God touches us. When God lives in us, when God dwells in us, when God stays with us, when God touches human reality, the ordinary is made extraordinary. It is the ordinary moments that God opens the heavens for His enduring loving presence, turning the ordinary into the extraordinary. It is for this reason why we can walk barefoot on this earth that is calst, not the calst, <laughs> that is calst, barefoot. Why? Because when Jesus came into this world in His incarnation, He touched the ordinariness of the human ground. And in that touching, it was purified and sanctified, made extra ordinary turning the human ground as the sacred ground of god this is no longer our ground in the incarnation of jesus this became his ground that is now that is why we can walk barefoot we are discalced i am discalced okay yeah. because there is no protection there is no security it is now a holy ground because God touched our ground. However, God does not only touch the ordinary, but even the dry, the empty, the needy, the vulnerable and wounded aspects of our lives, making them also extraordinary. God touches not only the ordinary, but generously includes our crisis moment. In the first lecture series from Father Junjun Agruda OCD, he told, us, he told us, in times of crisis and difficulties, God raises saints and mystics. I hope you remember that during the first lecture series. You see, I'm also watching it. <laughs> so that I know what kind of shoes I need to fill in. Uh -oh. This is not a familiar territory, not a familiar ground. So I need to be fam to familiarize myself. In times of crisis and difficult moments, God raises saints and mystics, and such raising is no other than the love of God touching our crisis moments. How can we be raised if we are not touched? If we do not allow God to touch our crisis moments and that touching is no other than being clothed with faith hope and love when god touches us he is clothing us with faith it is not just a touch because you want to make papansin or to catch attention of someone no it is a touching that involves clothing we are clothed with faith we are clothed with hope we are clothed with love. Crisis is not event dependent, but is determined by one's sufficiency and control. Even if the event is so tremendous, but there is a considerable level of sufficiency and control in the person, it would not be a crisis. Only when sufficiency and control are at stake, when crisis situations come to the fore. So you have a crisis not because of the event, but because it attacks your control and sufficiency. Even though it is a minor event, but if it attacks and challenges your, your control and sufficiency, then you will be in a crisis. The Catholic philosopher Carl Jasper speaks of death, suffering, struggle, chance, and guilt as limit situations. In German, we call it the Grenz Situationen. The crisis situation. But this crisis situation from the perspective of spiritual life is a great moment for God to touch, to dwell, to remain, and transform it into a moment of grace. So what is taking place when God touches our crisis? 
As I have mentioned earlier, God clothes us with the gift of faith, hope, and love. Faith is the infusion of divine understanding. Hope is total trust in God. Love is undivided desire for God. That is what God is clothing us when He touches us. Of course, this sounds familiar to you because this is what St. John of the Cross speaks in the dark of the soul. Book 2, chapters 14 to 24. After the night of purification, purgation, and illumination, God puts on us the garments of faith, hope, and love. However, the touch of God will only transform our crisis moments in our receptivity to God as we listen to Him like in the baptism of the Lord. Situated in that long line of Shema Israel, listen, O Israel, Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad, listen well, listen well, receive the touch of God well. And when you receive the touch of God well, you will be able to respond to Him well, saying, Here I am, Hineni, I am at your disposal, and become responsible to our neighbors. Here is the reciprocal relationship in spirituality. God touching the human reality and the human person receiving God's touch as one listens and grows in faithfulness to Him. Such faithfulness occupies the cornerstone of the Carmelite life, as articulated in the rule of life, in obsequio Jesu Christi, in allegiance to Jesus Christ. Edith Stein, in the hidden life, you are familiar with the works of Edith Stein, I hope. So this will not be an introductory course. So I assume that you are familiar with the life, in a way, and the few works of Edith Stein. She tells us in the hidden life, Carmelites can repay God's love, reciprocate, by their everyday lives in no other way than by carrying out their daily duties faithfully in every aspect. The way to reciprocate the touch of God is to be faithful to Him. That is why, if you go to the second mansion of Teresa of Avila, the emphasis is, after self-knowledge in uh, the first mansion, what is the emphasis in the second mansion? Perseverance. We are told to persevere. It is not just enough to know that you are the image of God. You discover that God is in your life. You receive it. You need to do it daily. You need to persevere. And I read from the second mansion, number six. Do not think lightly, sisters, of the first grace, nor be downcast if we have not responded immediately to our Lord's voice. For His Majesty is willing to wait for us many a day, even many a year, especially, especially when He sees perseverance and desires, good desires in our hearts. Perseverance is the first essential. With this, we are sure to profit greatly. That is according to Teresa of Avila. So in perseverance, one makes the fundamental desire operative to God. In the very desiring of the person, and I would like to emphasize this because this is the fundamental dynamics in spiritual accompaniment and direction. In the very desiring, God becomes present. When you desire God, God becomes so near to you. He is so present in our desiring that the heavens are unveiled and it opens for God's presence to dwell and come forth in us. Now, at this point, we shall now look several moments in the life of Teresa Benedicta of the Cross and Edith Stein, the name that I will use for this presentation because it is shorter. Uh, 
Edith Stein, or no? Teresa Benedict of the Cross is a good name, beautiful name, but uh, it is a little bit of tongue twister to me. So let me uh, just use the word Edith Stein. Moments wherein God clothed her, particularly in her crisis situation, clothing her with a garment of faith, hope, and love. In 1934, April 15, that was the clothing ceremony of Teresa Benedicta of the Cross. Do you still remember your clothing ceremony? Were you not excited by that event that you have invited all your relatives and friends and your neighborhood, even your elementary teachers? <laughs> Because the clothing ceremony is a very important day. That is the day that I will receive the habit, the Carmelite habit. According to the rule or according to the formula, the tradition of Carmel, the novice will kneel on the carpet before the grill. Lying on a footstool nearby was the rest of her Carmelite habit. Then the following words are pronounced. Look at what is pronounced. May the Lord clothe you. With the new self, with the new self, created in God's image, justice and holiness of truth. That is what the clothing is. And the mother prioress, standing at the novice left, look, took, will take the cincture as a sign of obedience, the blessed scapular of poverty, and the mantle and veil as chastity. Here, the Carmelite habit is the exterior garment. It is the exterior garment. However, the spiritual dynamics of clothing has been taking place long ago. And that is the case for Edith Stein. Exteriorly, we see that Edith Stein is clothed with a habit. But the interior clothing of God happened from the very beginning of her existence, clothing her with faith, hope, and love. According to the account of Teresia Renata Poselt, OCD, the novice mistress of Edith Stein, it was expected that many people will come and visit and participate at the ceremony because Edith Stein is a known personality, a known figure at that time. Many came to give their congratulations. Many came to see her. Put your situation in Edith Stein. Would you not be elated? Would you not be so happy that people remember you? That people adore you? That people glorify you? You see, I am really valuable. Because many people came during my vestition, during my clothing. I am really loved and remember. And most of the time, because we are so moved by these uh, visitations or by this adulation given to us, that will comprise our gratitude after the ceremony. Thanking all the people who came there and to give gifts, to give flowers, to give their congratulations. But that is not the case for Edith Stein. As Teresia Renata Possel accounted for us, it hardly affected Edith Stein. The adulations, the praises, the congratulations did not affect Edith Stein. The equilibrium of the soul she gained was not to be unbalanced by this evidence of universal admiration. Maybe for us now, we will really be in heavens if there will be throngs of people, if there will be many likers, now online po tayo, if there will be thousands of likers or thousands of viewers, maybe we will say, oh, we have really a follower, we are really doing good, we are really loved and cherished by people. For Edith Stein, she does not care. The stillness of the soul, and I would like to highlight here, is an indicator that God has put a garment on the soul of Edith Stein, protecting and inoculating her 
from the disturbances and distractions of the inordinate goods of the world. To ask ourselves, am I easily being moved and disturbed by the presence or lack of presence of admiration? If I am not remembered by people, am I disturbed? If people will not recognize and honor me, am I disturbed? You better be close by God, by the garment of God, or else you will be always disturbed. Not only in your prayer life, but in your day-to-day -day life. I wish to share with you now nine selected moments in the life of Edith Stein, which I see as a crisis, but also a moment for God to clothe her. These are moments where she is face to face with her insufficiency and inability to exercise control. However, she received well, she listened well, and allowed God to act on her. This spiritual dynamics is captured in this movement, the letting go and embracing. Spiritual life is not just letting go, huh? So your theme song should not be only let go, letting go, like the, what is this? Uh, oh, frozen. That is an incomplete picture of the spiritual life. In every letting go, you need to ask, am I embracing something? That's very important in the spiritual life. Losing and finding. Don't just lose. Don't just lose weight. Don't just empty yourself, but be sure that in your, as you empty yourself, you are also discovering and finding the important one. Because if not, your entire life would be a series of loss. Pag puro ka loose na lang ang loose ng loose, ang tema ng buhay mo ay walang wala. So the losing should be followed by finding. Crisis, moments of grace. You all know that at an early age, the, the, the father of Edith Stein died around two years old, before two years old. And for that, she has no memory or recall of her father. Even the uh, relatives of the father, she has no picture in her mind. So it is not a problem <laughs> because she is not uh, bothered by these memories of the father. However, the effect of the death of the father to the mother is what Edith Stein witnessed. Imagine, a widow need to raise children, need to continue and save the, the lumber business. That is really a crisis situation and relatives during at that time was telling her you might not survive it your condition is really a difficult extremely difficult situation maybe you can resonate in your exam in your experiences we do need to raise children need to fend for them need to provide goods is that easy it is a difficult trying, a crisis moment. But we know what happened. In the end, the dying business was turned into prosperity. And she was able to sustain the family. In fact, even supporting Edith Stein to her, uh, graduate studies, to the further studies, not only the basic studies, but further studies. What is happening here? What is taking place here? We are told in the autobiography of Edith Stein that the mother of those Auguste Stein, of Edith Stein, is a pious woman. A woman 
who always comes to God faithful in their Jewish tradition. So when Edith Stein was older, she became aware of just how efficiently her mother was in managing the business. And my mother, according to Edith Stein, will always attribute this fact to being blessed by heaven. The mother will always say, After all, I can, Im I can imagine that I owe everything I achieve to my own ability. Edith Stein would always remember that the mother will tell them, with the help of God, God willing, this would be possible. That is what Edith Stein witnessed to her mother. Crisis, but coming to God. What happens? There is the garment of hope being clothed on her. The crisis moment, widow, raising her children, keeping the business, was turned into prosperity and the sustenance of the family. Was it because of the mother? It is because of God who clothed them with the garment Another event in the life of Edith Stein, when she volunteered as a nurse. Many have uh, explored this area, but I would like to see it from the perspective of the spiritual dynamics. So she was a nurse, Red Cross assistant nurse, and she was sent into the Cadet Academy, which was converted into a lazaretto or hospital for infectious disease. This is while she was studying already under uh, Husserl, Edmund Husserl, the great philosopher and founder of phenomenology. So what do you find in that uh, infectious disease hospital? Spotted fever, dysentery, cholera, typhoid. Question. Would you like to go there? Do you want to go there? Maybe we will have the hesitation. Why will I go there? I might be contaminated. I might catch the sickness that is lingering there. But you see, these are the things that did not bother Edith Stein. She was in that facility when there is sickness, perhaps uncurable sickness, and even at the brink of death. But look at her words. This is in the life of Edith Stein. I got the impression that the sick were not used to getting loving attention. Her eyes is not on the sickness, but on the person who is sick. Needing that love. And that volunteer helpers, therefore, could find endless opportunities to show their own compassion and love of neighbor in this place of suffering. What is the crisis moment there? It is not easy to take care of the sick. Maybe you have experienced that for that. Tatawagin mo talaga ang Diyos kapag nag-aalaga ka ng may sakit. Mapapa, Diyos ko po ka talaga when you are taking of someone who is sick, bedridden, and cannot take care of himself. Not easy to take care of the sick. Physiologically, emotionally, spiritually. Because we are always at the risk of infection and contamination. But you see, what is the grace there? Erich Stein saw it as an endless opportunities of care and compassion. What is that? The garment of love. So what I'm saying here is, even though before, even though Erich Stein is not yet in the Christian tradition, God is already working in her. We need to see that. 
the work of God did not start when she became a Christian and a Catholic. No, long before, from the womb of her mother, God is already working on her, closing her with faith, hope, and love. And beautifully, she is receiving it. That is why you look at the effects. We see the effects. Of course, we will not see there that God has clothed me with this. No, you need to see interiorly that is spiritual reading. That is a course that I have developed. Spiritual reading is not, be, it's not in the text, but it is in dynamics of what takes place before God and the human person as articulated in the text. Which is what is happening here. Instead of sickness, opportunities of care and compassion. That is the eyes of God. So Edison looks through the eyes of God who clothed her with love. The third moment, the death of Adolf Reina. Maybe you are familiar with this. A very good friend, beloved friend of Edith Stein, and of course a teacher, died on November 1917. And because of the war, she was he was killed during the war. But it is a sudden death. It is a death that is not anticipated. And normally, when we are faced with unexpected sudden death, what is our reaction? Bakit ngayon pa? Bakit biglaan? Sana ako na lang ang kinuha. Mm -hmm. Sigurado ka, ha? Baka pagpalitin bigla. Mm -hmm. And that is our language when we are face to face with the sudden, unprepared, unexpected death. And that is what Edith Schein is struggling. And she was expecting that the wife of Adolf Reinach, Anna Reinach, would be soaked in fear, would be broken, would be in grief, would be in despair, would be in distraught because of the sudden death of her husband. But it turned out differently. She saw a woman suffering but at peace. And this is the words. These are the words of Edith Stein. It was my first encounter with the cross. I was expecting a woman crying out of control. Sinking in despair and sadness. But what I saw is a woman in peace. That was my encounter with the cross. The divine power that bestows on those who carry it. For the first time, I was seeing with my very eyes the church born from her Redeemer's suffering, triumphant over the sting of death. That was the moment, according to Edith Stein, my unbelief collapsed and Christ shone forth in the mystery of the cross. The belief in the resurrection of the Lord. What is that? That is the garment of faith. There is understanding of the divine life. There is that infusion of the wisdom of what it means to live in God. The power of the resurrection, eternal life. We cannot understand it by theological studies. Even if you have 10 PhDs, by just your mind, you cannot understand what resurrection is. It is by infusion, God will teach you what divine life is. And that is faith. That is the garment of faith. Remember, this is what Edith Stein is looking for in her life. That certainty, that surety, apodicticity of existence of man. And it is not according to the human horizon of time, but against the background of the infinity of God. Little trivia, it just came into my mind. That is why there is always a tension between the two philosophers, Martin Heidegger and Edith Stein. Heidegger will speak of the sign und Zeit, being and time, being understood against, under the horizon of time. For most of us, maybe that is how we understand it. And we are under time and soon we will die. 
But Edith Stein would respond to that, No, we should not understand only by against time, but against eternity. That's why we have the, uh, the finite and eternal being. That is the response of Edith Stein to the being and time of Martin Heidegger. This is not a philosophy class, so I need to deviate again into my... Just a, just a, because these are philosophical writings of Edith Stein, but speaking of divine wisdom, iba mas maganda yun? Nagtuturo ka, hindi dahil na pag-aralan mo sa eskwelahan. You are teaching that because you have learned it in school, but because God has taught you. Because God has infused it in you. That is the garment of faith. Sudden grief, so sorry, sudden death, grief, brokenness, distraught, that is crisis moments. And what is the grace? There is that steadfastness in the promise of resurrection. There is peace, the garment of faith. So look, even though without yet being baptized into Christianity, God is already loathing her. Woman at the Cathedral of Frankfurt. Maybe you are familiar with this. So, she visited the cathedral. Edith Stein visited the cathedral. And Edith Stein saw a woman who had obviously been shopping come into the empty church and kneel silently in a pew. So, okay lang pala mag-shopping. <laughs> but after the shopping, you go to the church. Maybe that's why there are chapels in the Malls, you know? So that after you do the worldly thing, you, again, you, you can go to, to God and kneel down there. Now, what did Edith Stein notice? A woman was carrying a basket, came in and knelt down in one of the pews to pray briefly. And according to her, this was entirely new for me. Here was someone interrupting her everyday shopping errands. To come into this church, although there were no other persons, was in it as though she was as though she were here for an intimate conversation. And Edison says, "I could never forget that." What is striking in that account is this: in the silence of the woman praying, Edison figure out. That she was in intimate conversation. We need to highlight that. What Edith Stein saw is not just the woman praying, but the woman was in conversation, an intimate discourse, dialogue with who? Of course, no other than God. So here speaks of that awareness of God present at that very moment. And mind you, she is not yet becoming a Christian here. She has not even read the book of Teresa of Avila. So what I am saying, again, long before the clothing has been done, don't just zero in into the conversion. That would be a poor reading of Edith Stein. Look from the very beginning, the divine human relationship on how God at the very beginning of creation, has clothed us with His life, with His love, and with His life. Now, what is the crisis moment there? Noise and business. That is the woman experiencing. Then suddenly, there was silence and intimate conversation. What is the characteristic of an intimate conversation? Pwede ba yung intermate conversation na kapag may nag-text sa'yo, biglang, sadali lang ha? Pwede po ba yan? No! In intimate conversation, there are no distractions. The heart is undivided when it is an intimate conversation. You only call it intimate if the desire is undivided. So when you are praying, even if you are silent there, but if your mind is somewhere else, what will I cook later on? What will I eat this lunch? 
when will this priest end his topic? <laughs> that is not intimate conversation because the desire is divided. And here, we figure out now, and it's time, having that sense of undivided desire for God, speaking of intimacy of conversation with that woman silent in the church after going to a shopping what is that? The garment of love. As I always say, we can never make our desire undivided. Kahit anong gawin nyo, kahit dasalin ninyo pa lahat ang dasal sa buong mundo, kahit lumuhod kayo 24 hours in the blessed sacrament, only God can make your desire undivided. That's why we need to be clothed by God. That is the only way that the desire becomes undivided. Kaya nga po, no, let me deviate a little. That is the beauty of the Annunciation. Luke chapter 1. In the dwelling of God in Mary, that is undividedness of desire. You can only be intimate when the desire is totally, it belongs solely to God. Next, the reading of Teresa of Avila. You know oh, what happened there. So, after perhaps the work in the university, she went into a little vacation and there she saw the book, The Life of Teresa, and there she read it. And we have these famous lines from her. This is... The truth. This is the truth. Ah, that line speaks of something. It means to say that for a long time, it was her searching and finding and seeking. So the line only says, this is the truth. But it tells us of a host of things about the re of, of Edith Stein. Kasi masasabi mo lang, ito na yun kung naghahanap ka talaga. You can say na ito na yun, hindi ko lang managhanap. How will you say that this is it? If it is not really your desire. If you are not really seeking it. If you are not really longing for it. So this presupposes a long journey of seeking, finding, and searching for truth. That is why I will not also give emphasis on the so-called atheistic moment in Edith Stein saying that I gave a praying and everyone will highlight that already. So, oh, Edith Stein gave a praying, etc., etc., and making a big deal out of it. Again, full reading of the text. Maybe the giving of a prayer is part of the searching, part of the seeking, part of the desiring. Because in order for you to embrace something, you need to Give up something. You need to let go of something. Mama ba? Oh, so you um, stopping of praying will not immediately mean atheism or lack of belief in God. Let's not follow. Again, that is a dangerous road if you will and you cannot support evidence for that. And the relatives of Edith will get angry at you. I'm very sure. <laughs> because there was a debate on this. Specifically on this line. So the giving up is for Edith Stein to embrace something. At the moment, we are given an indication that here begins the searching for the truth. And now comes the reading of Teresa of Avila. This is the truth now. We should be surprised, not because of what she read, but because of what she said after that. Anong sabi niya? And this is my secret. Secretum meum mihi. When you discover something in the academic field, which Edistine belongs, what would you do after that? Aba, i-publish mo agad. Tama po ba? I'm, I knew that well because I am in the journals, the scientific journals of San Beda. If you discover something, you need to write it and publish it so that the world will know. 
and you know you will gain recognition because of what you have discovered and you will gain also monetary support because you have the, done a good research. But here, what is discovered is not made public. It is not made known. That should surprise us. Because normally, pag may na-discovery ka, ipagtakalat mo. Kaya nga may marites. Kaya nga may chismoso chismosa. Because they have discovered something and they want everybody to know about it. But here, she discovered something and this is my secret. This is very important. This is intimacy. It's intimacy. The interior encounter with God, the close encounter with God. Again, clothing her with love. The searching for truth for Einstein at the beginning became the intellectual investigation. I think that was in the prayer earlier. So kay Einstein, yung simula ng investigation of truth, intellectual investigation. And when you investigate intellectually, your mind becomes more noisy. When your investigation only is in the level of the mind, you will become more restless. Kaya nga may tinatawag na overthinking. Think more, investigate more with your mind, you will become noisy and restless. Kaya maraming matatalino hindi mapirme, hindi matahimik because the investigation is only in the intellect. Saan po pala, Father, dapat? Investigate with your desire. That is the kind of investigation we want. That we will seek with our fundamental desire for God as was given to us in Genesis 1.26. As the image of God. There is the fundamental desiring for God because God has given us Himself and we receive Him making us His image and likeness. And for that, we know whom to desire. Don't just investigate intellectually. Investigate for yourself. Ano ngayon ang tanda that you are really investigating by desire? Ito pa. Silence. Hear your silence. Rest, peace in one's life. Garment of love. The crossing of the threshold to the Catholic faith. Ito na. The crossing of the threshold. So, you know the problem there is how she will tell it to her mother. Yun po yung pinaka-problema. Not really the transfer, no, the baptism itself. But how will I tell this to my mother who is a faithful and devout Christian? And when she attempted it to tell it to her mother, look at the response. There was weeping. There was despairing. There was a grief. At ito matindi. There was mourning. Nagluluksa. Because she will be considered dead already because of the transfer, the conversion to Catholicism. Will you, disper you, will, you dis uh, will you be disturbed by that? Your mother is at in approval of entering, your, uh, entering the OCD. Will you, be dis you will be disturbed by that? Maybe we will be disturbed. Oh, my mother is at approved of, of me becoming religious. I will just wait for her to die. But the problem is, 120 years old na nanay mo. Ang lakas pa rin. Tumatakbo pa rin sa LRT. Uh, baka mauna ka pa. Ah, ah, baka mauna ka pa. Oh. So you will be affected. They, are not they don't approve of me. My conversion, what will I do now? Well, in psychology, you can say, you might be rejected. You might be, you might feel alone. You might be, feel abandoned. Disowned by the family. But is that what Edith Stein is telling us? No! Even though the family is not 
in approval of her conversion with her mother specifically. According to the account, you can read that in, of course, the life of Edward Stein. Now, 26, 29, 30 pages and pages 18 also. In despite of that, there was patience. There was strength. There was tranquility, peace. And this time was not disturbed by you. It was not disturbed. Hindi sa walang pakialam siya sa mananay niya. Mahal na mahal niya. She loved her mother well. But she know that she made to make the desire undivided. Remember in St. John of the Cross, what are the purpose of the goods? That it should be in the order that leads to God. Goods are only goods if they are in the order that leads us to intimacy with God. If it does not lead us to intimacy, then it becomes an attachment. Kaya sa lang attachment. And this is what spiritual directors should really be focused on because attachments are not visible. They are not obvious. They are not obvious. They are so subtle that the devil will use it thinking that you are doing good, but actually not. Because it divides your desire from God. So the spiritual director should have the eye for that. Can I deviate a little? May oras po ba? Stricto po ba kayo sa oras? Baka pa, si Kuya Proylan talaga. Hindi, okay po. Oh, sayang naman din, misa lang po ako mapadpad dito po, di ba? Opo. Ito po sinasabi ng mga seminary sa akin lagi. This is one of the reasons. Father, I would like to go out muna sa seminary. I want to go out. Why? Because I want to help my family. You know, they're struggling financially. And I would like to help them work so that I can give something to them. Sounds good? Sounds good. But that is a division of desire. And maybe you can you will yield to that because it sounds good, eh? Condol, I will have the palm belief, eh? Question! Where is now your attention, orientation, and disposition? To God? Or to your family now? Alam niyo po, I have never heard a story of seminar and going out to have the family na natulungan talaga. Nakabigat pa! <laughs> it adds more problem to the family instead of helping. Because you are not putting it in the order. Nakukuhan niyo po ba yan? This is very important. So, paano po pagod in poverty? Desire God more. Make your goods in the order that leads to God. And I will tell you, you will see how God will sustain you. How God will provide the needs of your family. Masyadong mong kinakaya. Akala mo ikaw magliligtas? Deception yan. This is a deception from the devil, kaya hindi siya obvious po. But you need to know well, if you're the spiritual director, ah, it sounds good, but too good to be true. So, just a little deviation. Edith Stein loved the mother so much, but it divides my desire. I have the one desire. That is why, in spe despite of the fact that they are not in approval of the conversion, there is peace. Bakit? There is only peace when the desire becomes undivided. Because there is true freedom. Kailan po malaya ang tao? When is man free? When he only desire one. If the desire is divided, there is no freedom. There is no freedom. You are tied with that, diba? Nagpapagulo sa buhay pag maraming gusto. Punta ng Lazada shopping. Dami na mo. Ay, ay, ano ba na? Break mo naman. O, kita nyo? The many desires makes us disturbed in our lives. But when we make the desire undivided, you will see the total freedom in that. And then there is peace. May kahati ba si Lord sa puso mo? Huwag sumagot agad. Bawal ang charing. Bawal ang etosera. Ito po ang tanda. Kung may kahati. There is disturbance in your life. 
if you are disturbed, it only means one thing. May kahati ang Diyos sa puso mo. The death of Augustus time, namatay na yung nanay niya because of stomach cancer. Pumasok si Edith Stein, never she saw the mother. If you're in the situation, anong drama mo sa buhay? <laughs> Hindi ko ba lang nakita ang nanay ko. Baka galit ang nanay ko sa akin. Oh, Mabubunta na akong impyerno. Hmm. Dami sinabi. Para naman mahal talaga yung nanay. Eh, yung nanay, buhay nga yung nanay, hindi naalagaan. Mm-hmm. Yung namatay, tsaka bilang nagdrama-drama. Okay. Sorry for the Tagalog words. Ang hirap po, ita- ang hirap po i-translate in English. Okay. Uh, uh, itanong nyo na lang po sa iba. Sorry, sorry for that uh, spontaneity in Tagalog. Oo. Namatay. Siyempre malungkot siya. Na kay- Pero you see, there was harshness in the relationship. There was bitterness. Not being understood, separation, even perhaps regrets, regressive longings. Paano kaya kung di ako pumasok? Mga ganyan kadramahan sa buhay. But there is the great. Knowing that the mother has already died, there was peace. Renewed spiritual presence and relationship. Kaya sabi niya, when she learned that the mother passed, she was standing on the choir. I was standing in my place of choir. Waiting to renew my vows, and my mother was beside me. Wow! Who will tell you that your mother is beside you if, he, if she is not there physically? Baka sabihin, may tingaling ka. Kasi sabi ko yung nanay, kung may nakikita kang hindi namin nakikita, ganun. Delikado sa exorcism yan. <laughs> But uh, she was saying, no, my mother is beside me. Remember in the Eucharistic prayer, one, for the dead, life, is not ended, only change. And you will only see the change in life when God has clothed you with His garment. No garment of God, you will see that life has truly ended. But if the faith, the garment of faith is on you, the garment of hope, the garment of love, you will see that there is still eternal life. Now, the last days of Edith Stein, and we are all familiar with this. I shall leave this house soon after Christmas, and I don't know where will I go. Our situation is so precarious, that is what she told her sister. And they were really trying to escape. They were really trying to transfer to Switzerland to save their lives. There was uncertainty. There was instability. Delicate situation and of course suffering because the persecution is really real. It is already knocking at the door. But you see in Edith Stein, read the text. There was trust. There was calmness. Reparation even for sins. The desiring God's will. The acceptance with a willing heart and faithfulness. Let me just read one line from the self-portrait. I have no other desire than that God's will be done in me and through me. Then he quotes Psalm 31.15. In manibus to we sortes may I, my days are in your hands. Could you now say that? My days, Lord, are in your hands. Ayoko nga, Lord. In my hands pa. Mag-shopping pa ako pagkatapos nitong ano eh, seminar. Punta pa ako, malapit dito. Ah, Robinson's Magnolia. Oo, oh, bili pa ako doon pang Pasko. Kasi next week, marami ng tao. No. Time is say, my, my, my life is in your hands now. Wow. Only the one who is, who is clothed with God's garment can say that. And of course, the last moment. August 2, 1942, 5 p.m., then the Gestapo knocked on the door and they took away Edith Stein. You know the story. I hope you are faithful readers, so I don't need to go to the details. And we have the last line, beautiful line. Um, let us go for our people. This is a very important line for me because it now gives fullness into the design of God in her life. Edith Stein was born on the day of atonement, Yom Kippur. Very good. Sorry, very good. Classic po pala. Sorry. Okay. Yom Kippur is that 
moment when they offer, they kill an animal and then sprinkle the blood of the Holy of Holies at three levels as a way of having that forgiveness of sins of the people of Israel. That is an atonement. That is when Edith time was born. And now you hear at the last moment, recorded moment in her life, let us now go for our people. Life is being offered, not for her sake, not for her sake, but according to the design of God, becoming an atonement, becoming a reparation for his, for her people. So instead of avoiding, instead of evading, there were attempts going to Lapaquer in Switzerland. No more evasion, no more evading. I am going. Let us go for our people. I will not evade. I will go. Go, go, go. And the scriptures, when we say going, it is listening to God's voice, embodying the compassion of God. The Good Samaritan story calls to mind. You know the conversation. And then Jesus asked the rabbi, who do you think is the neighbor? Chatter, I chatter. And what did Jesus tell him? Go and do the same. Go and do likewise. It is no longer the going like that of the robber. Going away. <laughs> it is no longer the going of the priest and the Levi. Going by. It is the going that listens to God and embodies His compassion. Come, let us go for our people. I have heard God's voice, and I go. John 21, po, if you want to have a good foundational text of this. No time to discuss that, but uh, nandun po sa libro ko po yan. Nag-promote pa yan, no? Uh, if you want to, to relate with that, when you hear the voice of God, then that is only the time you can really go. Do you love me, Peter? Important question, because you should hear it. In the hearing, you will be sent. Go feed my sheep. Another topic. Now, from the testimony of the eyewitness. So, no conversation, na, no words, na si at each time. But what were the witnesses when they were in the concentration camp? Of course, there was pain, oppression, indescribable misery, anxiety, insanity, moaning. And according to the accounts, those who have witnessed at each time, there was interior strength, silence, calmness, self-control, comfort, helping others, consoling others, caring for others. This is the garment of faith, hope, and love. What then is the meaning of unveiling the heavens? Making the ordinary extraordinary, being clothed with God's garment of faith, hope, and love. The heavens are unveiled because of the enduring love of God for all of us. And when we allow this love to touch our ordinariness, even our crisis moment, it is turned into extraordinary, a graced moment. The touch of God is God's clothing us with faith, the wisdom of God, the hope, trust in God, and love, the undivided desire for God. Let the heavens be unveiled before us. Let the heavens be unveiled before us as we allow God to touch us, especially the wounded part in us. And as God touches us, let us allow Him to clothe us with the garments of faith, hope, and love, turning the ordinary into extraordinary, the mundane into holy. Magandang umaga po sa lahat. Thank you very much. So thank you, Father Sheldon, for 
uh, imparting to us your reflection and knowledge about uh, Edith Stein. Thank you for sharing it with us with very extraordinary passion and energy, Father. We enjoyed it. We enjoyed listening to you. So now we go to that part where we will have our open forum for this uh, last leg of our lecture series. At least we could accommodate two to three questions or any sharing that you have. No, what touched you in the during the lecture series? What are your reflections during the talk? So, okay. What's the name, Paul? OCDS. Uh, Father, I've been reading about uh, uh, Saint Benedict as uh, philosophy of phenomenology that she used to teach along with, uh, I mean, to teach or um, to work on while she was at the university. But I never fully understood what that really meant. Philosophy of phenomenology. Yun po kasi ang kilala si Edith Stein, no? the On Problem of Empathy, yung problem that I'm feeling, which is a dissertation written under Edmund Husserl. But uh, do not zero into that because that is uh, a small fragment in the interior life of Edith Stein. It was an attempt to understand. Empathy is an attempt to understand. This is, of course, a continuation of the third meditation of Edmund Husserl in her Cartesian meditations. So it is really philosophical. But I will not really uh, encourage you to read that because you don't have a good picture of Edith Stein. Many would be stuck on the problem of empathy, thinking that it is the celebrated work of Edith Stein. I tell you, it is not. In fact, the dissertation will end non leaked It is not clear. That is how the dissertation will end. So it is just a show of the attempt of Edith Stein to understand. Put yourself in the shoes of others. Of course, the psychos, physical, all the realms, the sensitive, the, uh, the physical, the personal, the intellectual, all these things. But I tell you, he never fully achieved her desire in that work. Because you can never really know by your intellect. You can only know by God giving it to you. Teaching it to you. Tama po ba? So, maybe, of course, I can discuss that in as part of philosophical studies. But uh, if you are focused on spiritual life, I will not encourage you to, to read that. Read The Hidden Life. In Science of the Cross nga po, the Cruz and Vision Shaft, it is a commentary rin po ni John of the Cross. So you cannot read The Cruz and Vision Shaft, Science of the Cross, if you, are not, uh, you do not have a good grasp of John of the Cross. So sa akin, Hidden Life. It's a good material. Uh, don't just read it like you are reading uh, a meme in the Facebook. Awag eh, kasi hindi ko ganun ang mga writings ng mga ito. Go to the hidden life. Empathy, okay, but it, it proves unsuccessful. Okay pala yun, no? If the dissertation is unsuccessful, you are awarded summa cum laude. So that is the key. Make your thesis, mga brothers who are writing thesis, make it unsuccessful, and maybe you will be awarded summa cum laude. So that is how the, the, the dissertation ended. Non-liquid, not clear. I don't know how really I will understand others. Because you don't do it intellectually. You want understanding? You want understanding? Let God teach you. Be still. Be still. And know that I am God. How did you know? Because in the stillness of the mind, the stillness of the memory and the stillness of the will, the presence of God emerges. God teaches you now because your mind is not noisy. Ito rin po yung danger in spiritual life. If it is so much bombarded with spiritual exercises related with 
intellectual exercise. We should be very careful with that as Carmelites because that is not our tradition. I don't want to mention the exercise. Yeah, baka I will be put in the bad light here. But, uh, <laughs> but I know them also because they are also good friends with me. But that is not the way we do it. We do not discourse intellectually. We do not have that... Uh, I forgot the term. We are using that. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. We have, but I cannot mention it here. Uh, the intellectual uh, activities. Our exercises should put the faculties in silence. The intellect, the memory and will according to John of the Cross. And when you do that, there is the prayer of recollection according to Teresa of Avila, which is the what mansion? Yes, what mansion? That only in the prayer of recollection you will be led to the prayer of quiet. Yung po yung movement ng spiritual life ng Carmelite. Okay. And I'm all quoting OCD. <laughs> Thank you, po. Thank you, po, Father. So, any more? Uh, uh, maybe this would be the last, then we proceed with the next. Okay, po. Name po natin. I'm Emily Panganiban. First of all, I don't know. I want to start uh, this way. Na how did I? I have a friend from also Gilmore, my best friend, my childhood friend, my neighbor, uh, who entered Carmel 1977. Uh, this is very memorable. In its time, it's very memorable for me. And in 1998 when he, he was about to be canonized. And then my, my friend, uh, OCDS, Nan, told me, come over and I'll, I want to share with you about Edith Stein. This I don't know anything about uh, Edith Stein. So I, I came and then th th told me all about Edith Stein, just listening. And then she told me that to invoke her before the canonization, anything I want, maybe sort of petition, of course, no? And then now, hearing your story, Father, it is, everything was validated for me and confirmed what the, the background of my friend. Her mother, uh, when she entered Carmel, she's the only child. And mother and father resisting up to the last end ng siyang, hanggang siya namatay ang mama niya. I'm sorry, father and father and father. Hindi naman siya, hindi siya halos pumunta. Parang walang nangyari. Uh, ako naman, ito mga very first friend, hindi eh, yung ko, ako na lang talaga ang errand girl niya, na ako ang lahat gumagawa. Kaya pag sinasabi niya sa akin, kailangan ko hindi ko maintindihan ni father. Ano? Hindi ko uuwi? Hindi ka pupunta sa father mo? Hindi, nasa ospital na yun. Maayos na yun. Ako ang hindi ako makatiis. Na ako ang nagmalungkot dahil sa akin mo eh. Hindi pa payagan ng virus na you go, 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 you Pero nung mamatay ang mother niya, ganun din, hindi siya umiiyak. Pinayagan siya umuwi. Nakaupo doon sa bahay nila. Nakatawa sa akin. Sister, hindi ako makatulog. Pwede bang lumipat ako sa bahay niyo? Oo nga ako. Eh, ayaw ba ka ako nasa ang mother mo? Inilibig na bukas. No, no, I want to stay alone. Kaya lumip. Magkapit bahay magkapitbayo kami. Kaya ako naman, very, I don't know, honored at nalulungkot. At the same time, Para akong dikotomize din dahil hindi ko alam kung anong gagawin ko na parang umaasa sila sa akin. Ang pinagtataka ko, hindi mo lang siya para sabihin wala akong nakitang duha, wala akong nakitang lungkot, basta nagdalasal at para siyang detached na, 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 na pinagtitiginin siya lahat sa kapit bahay namin dahil lang na madre siya. Tsaka hindi nga umuwi. 
Kaya nung naglalakad kami sa simenteryo, sabi ko, hasakay ka ba? O, sa kotse. No, I'll walk. Pagating sa kalagitnaan, hindi na rin makatiis. Gusto nung umuwi. Dito, sa Gilmore. Sabi ko, let's wait first para tap matapos. Kaya hindi ko intindihan up to now. Pero nung um, sa tagal po ng kanyang sa, kalo, sa, sa madre, 42 na siya ngayon eh, 43 years na sa loob. Sabi ko, ngayon ko na intindihan, nung makonect ko yung yung story niyon saka nung ako pumasok sa Carmel ngayong 1999 or late or early 2000 ako nung pumasok ko dito eh. Ngayon, na-validate na naman sa akin yung story niyo. Na yung detachment, ano? And to last, to end my story, hanggang ngayon nga yung kwento niya na 28 years old kasi, uh, what do you call this? Napakarunong-hunong kaibigan ko, balidiktore ng elementary, balidiktore ng high school, nag-college, nag-CPA, nakapasa sa, sa, nakapasa sa CPA ng 19 pero hindi kumuha ng board kasi batang-bata pa siya. Pumunta sa Amerika for 3 years, hindi rin dikotomize din siya, hindi siya makapagtrabaho ng ayos, pero matalino. Nagpaalam sa akin, sabi niya, papasok sa Indiana. So, could, please, Indiana Carmel? Noong pa sa Amerika pa siya. Tapos, sabi ko, come home. Lalo ka akong mag magagalit ang nanay at tatay mo. No, 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 no. I don't, do, don't worry about that. Niya, Please, eh, ako ka ako. Gusto ko rin kitang madalaw. Huwag ka nang pumasok yun sa Indiana. Dito na lang sa atin. Ganun. Di umuwi naman. Di sing, that's the grace of God. Noong pumunta sa Carbill, nagtanam pa rin. Hindi pa rin nagpaalam. Nag-iwan lang ko sa akin ng sulat. Pinakita ko sa mother. Ay, naku. Lalo hong nagalit, galit na kitang nanay at tatay. Pero ang tagal hong nag-heal hanggang sa namatay ang tatay niya. Halos hindi pa almost heal. Kahit nung mamatay ang mother niya, wala siyang masyadong feeling. Kaya yun ang gusto ko maintindihan sa kwento niyo kay Edith Stein. Kung, kung, nauulit pala yun. Ano? At lastly, lastly, at the age of 28, hindi nyo ba naririnig po sa isa na po at ako'y medyo kinukunin ko yung sabi ko baka may makalimutan ako. Lastly, at the age of 28, tinranslate ho niya in Tagalog yung interior castle na hindi naman daw niya alam kung ano yon Basta nagbasa lang siya dahil affected siya ng mga Carbelite activity sa Indiana. Eh ngayon, pinabasa sa akin. Eh, hindi ko man humaintindihan that from English to Tagalog, ang Tagalog niya talagang parang out of this world na, na parang kung ano yung intindi niya. Sabi niya, direct daw ho sa, sa isip niya, direct sa makinilya. Direct, hindi yung writing, ha? direct sa makinilya ang ginawa niya. Meron na akong kopya. <laughs> Ngayon, pinakita ko kay Bishop Tirona. Sabi ko, Bishop, hindi ko maintindihan to. E di binigyan, binigyan namin isang kopya. Huwag niyong i-edit. Huwag niyong gagalawin nito. Basa-basahin niyo the way you understood it. It's live as is. <laughs> Hanggang ngayon, no, medyo ako doon naglalaro ngayon. <laughs> Tuwan-tuwa po ako sa narinig ko kay Edith Stein. <laughs> Thank you for you. Uh, rare time for me. Hindi ko alam kung kailan ako makabalik dito. Anyway, it's very important. First is, it might appear indifferent. Walang effect, no? Walang pakialam. Kaya, this is my warning. Do not be careful with psychology. Kasi yung psychology, yun nung Nagkaroon tayo na idea na that is indifference. But psychology fails to recognize that the fundamental relation is not the human relationship, but our relationship with God. There should be no dominance in psychology, even in formation. The dominant should be spirituality. Sorry. Now, baliktad po, dominance of psychology. You need to know the roots of psychology. That the goal of that is to throw away religion. To replace God. Be very careful with that. Okay po yan, psychology. I also do that. I use genogram, etc., etc., psychological technique. But that should not the one occupying the center. Because the fundamental relation is God. If you know that it is God's fundamental relation, then you are really giving the importance. Kasi yung our parents, human relation, must be in the order that leads to God. Good example of this I will now move from Edith Stein to the Rise of Lisieux. Remember, the parents in the first chapter of the story of a soul will give emphasis on the direction toward God. And it's very clear at the last moment of the father of Therese, Louis, 
deranged already, having mental problems. What was the language? What what did the father tell Therese? Ao shell in heaven, in heaven. Malino ba yon in heaven? The parents should teach that. But the goal is heaven. Your goal is not to please me. Your goal is not to be attached to me. Your goal is in heaven. And so am I. My goal is there. Ao shell. If everything is in the order, according to the promise of the Lord, at one time, we will see each other not in the joy of having the company of each other, but the joy of being united in love of God because we have been faithful to Him. That is the most important. Thank you, Father uh, Sheldon. Okay, so my dear uh, members of the community, I do not want to let this day pass without saying something about Father Sheldon. Uh, actually, I had uh, been with uh, some of our members who attended uh, his uh, continuous uh, I would say uh, classes online and it was uh, at the time when my uh, son died and I was in the height of grief and I was so thankful with Father Sheldon for uh, giving me that kind of uh, uh, I would say the grace given by God to him on spiritual reading so slowly father thank you for that because i realized really that in the stillness of uh the stillness of god and god is talking to me listening i always remember that listening but still i am uh growing uh, the uh what the garment of faith is still ongoing and realizing uh, your sharing, like what the sharing you had, uh, specifically on Edith's time, I, I would say that in the height of my loneliness and in the height of my the crisis situations that I have now, uh, thanks God, thanks to Mama Mary, because uh, really... Uh, it helped me a lot. And that intimate a relationship with, with God, and I always hold on to the word of God, uh, my peace I give you. This is uh, the gift of peace of God that I am trying to uh, stride and persevere so that I can... I can help my family, especially, uh, you know very well that I am a widow, and with my two daughters, anak ng aking mga, ng aking anak na namatay, and of course, with all other uh, enrichment, funny, ay mga enrichment uh, talks. Thank you so much, Father, for continuing your sharing because right now there are still many of our members who are joining online i think every saturday so uh sa lahat po ng ito maraming maraming salamat sapagkat uh patuloy nyo po yung paghilom ay patuloy at uh dahil po dito uh you are uh you have that gift, that gift of uh, spiritual uh, accompaniment. Because I learned from you that spiritual reading, when you when I read that spiritual the gospel, you always tell us, look at the characters, and then second, uh, he will tell us, and what what is invitation of God to you. So, yung po, lagi ko po yung sinasaisip. 
So, maraming maraming salamat po, Father. So, thank you po, Sister Isabel. So, we now proceed to the ano po, yung giving of certificate po, Father. So, we'll invite you to please stay here. And then... So, the certificate reads, The Certificate of Appreciation is hereby awarded to Rev. Father Sheldon Tabile O'Carm for being the speaker of our Carmelite Lecture Series 2022 to the theme Heaven Unveiled, Living the Ordinary Extraordinarily, given on November 26, 2022 at the OCDS House of Prayer. We thank you for your exceptional skills and for your generosity in sharing your knowledge and faith about the life and example of St. Teresa Benedicta of the Cross. Uh, on behalf of uh, no, the, our student director, Reverend Father Jonesio Balute, OCD, and uh, Sister Isabel Inlayo, OCDS President. Uh, and also, uh, this event, the online event, no, won't be successful without our media team. The hard work, the efficiency of our media team, especially to the crew of uh, Sir Arnel. So, may I request one of the representatives of uh, Sir Arnel to receive the certificate. Okay, so this ends no? our, our annual Carmelite Lecture Series. Hopefully, you learned a lot from the three Saturdays that we spent for an, for an hour each Saturday. So hopefully, this will be a good preparation also because Advent now is coming. So how do you best prepare Advent? How do you best prepare for the coming of Christ? It's not just a one time like yearly, but we should really live it out daily. It's a repeated uh, advice to us, but sometimes we forget because of many distractions in life. But nevertheless, we should really give our best no? while we are still living. So we try to be attuned with the heaven unveiled to live the ordinary extraordinarily. So uh, at this segment, we'll ask. Sister Millet for the closing remarks. Our Director of Formation, Sister Millet, please. Good morning, everybody. At this point, may I uh, extend our thanks to our uh, speaker this, uh, this morning, our lecturer, Father Sheldon. We would like to thank also, in as much as this is the last uh, lecture series, we would like to thank also our counterpart in the St. John of the Cross Seminary, the brothers around us, uh, the participants both uh, uh, online and uh, in HOP, let us remember that Father gave us the spiritual dynamics of our saint. Only God can make our love undivided. Crisis and broken moments, God is always there. Let us remember that. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Paul. And let's have the, ano po, uh, uh, what you call that? Photo ops. So, with uh, Father Sheldon, the student priors, uh, please come forward po and the community para meron tayong souvenir. 